Awesome. Fantastic. I, I, can't do, I, I, I can't do that on the iPad, get on their live and talk, can I? What's that? I said I'm listening to it on my iPad, but I can't get on there and actually talk, can I? No, you're talking on the phone. So your um your phone is actually going over the airwaves. So Okay, and that's what you're going to put me on? Well, you're on live right now. Oh, am I listening to the right report then? Uh, well, I think so. You're talking to me. So I don't know. Oh, you, you should be able to hear you. everything I say. So if you're not I got you. Are you the, so you're good? You're you're coming in loud and clear here. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm listening to that, trying to listen to the iPad, too. And it's, uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm ready to field you. Okay, perfect. So Scott Warning, right. everybody, is on the show, and I'm glad you're here. He's, uh, he's the assistant administrator for the Ohio Division of the Unlimited All-Stars, and, so, and he's been to Route 68 quite a bit. So I, I guess, Scott, at this point, why don't you tell us first a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into what they can expect uh, at Route 68. Well, as far as myself, it's it's my son, Joe, that actually drives in it, and, and I crew chief for him. And we had ended up finishing second in the national rankings this year. And you know, we, we've done pretty well. So, But we have been out at Route 68, and it's, it's, a, really, it's a really good track as far as that goes. It's, a, um, it's, a flat, it's basically a flat track. It's got long straightaways, and the turns are pretty tight. So, I, in my personal opinion, the last time that we ran out there, we were on a 305 that was actually 38 horse, and we were running right with the 450s. And that's because we, he, my son could drive, he could drive harder and deeper into the turns and accelerate harder through the turns, and that's where he was gaining all of his ground at. But he was right with them. So what you're saying is Route 68 is kind of like a paperclip then? You know, it, it is a lot like a paperclip. And the guys that do have the smaller engines, you know, I don't think it's all going to come down to the, the 450s and the Jawas out there. I truly don't believe that now. We're going to do a lot of testing on both of them again this year out there because it's fairly close to me as far as that goes. But I think the small, you know, you get into a lot of these two cycles and that that are going to be in that 40 and 50 horse range. The ones that literally get a good setup because they're going to be, you know, 100 plus pounds lighter than the 450s and the Jawas, I think they're going to hang right with them. I truly do. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, now the racetrack itself, is it, is it one that, that stays pretty heavy where, where the hookup's good? Or is it, is it kind of like a, does it go dry slick where maybe, Maybe like you said, these smaller motors aren't you know you you don't need that big horsepower because you can't hook it all up. Well, and and that's the key. You're not you know I don't think you're going to be able to hook all the big horsepower up through the turns, you know, and that's where that lighter cart is really going to have just you know have a good advantage. It's going to be through the turns on that. You know, it's the track stays pretty heavy. It's going to be like any other track, which, you know, once you start racing on it, you know, you're going to get, it's going to take a little rubber in the turns and it's, it's going to get a little loose, just like anything else, any other track. But the, I, I truly, I think it's going to be a good race for all. It's going to be a good track for everybody. You know, if, if you can, if you're going to hook up through the turns, if you get your setup right, you, you'll be able to fly through the turns, especially the smaller ones and the lighter ones. And they're going to have the acceleration coming off to where the big guys with the big motors, they're going to have to get out of the gas way into the turns and do a, do a long coast in to get through there. Or they're just, they're just going to push out and start, you know, getting real loose. Well, you, you know, like I do, Scott, everybody sitting here tonight, because we all know the, the big deal is, is, uh, tires now i told him at the start of the show you were you would maybe be giving some secrets away but you're you're probably not going to be giving them your preps and that type of thing but what can they expect tire wise what should they what do you think come september they're going to need uh tire wise well what we're going to end up doing in the ohio valley is the ohio the ohio valley unlimited we're going to have three races out there. I mean, we haven't, Justin Westerfeld and myself, we haven't put the schedule together yet, but we'll have three races out at 
Route 68, which two of them will be regular series point races, and one will be a quarter points race. As far as it goes, so people are going to have plenty of time to go out there and test and tune if they want to come and run with our series. As far as the tires go, when we ran out there the last time, we we did a lot of traveling in 2014, and we didn't run out there, but we did, were running out there in 2013. And the Burris, the Burris were good, but the Vegas were better, as far as that goes. You know, and it's you know. As far as people putting preps and that on, people are going to do their own thing. But we were actually running, and most of the guys that were in the, the Ohio Valley Series, most of them were on the Vegas. Now, some did have Burris on also, but the Vegas seemed to be faster than what the Burris were. And, and so no, no Maxis? Well, um, I didn't see any Maxis out there. Now, there was some talk on Bob's, and people were going back and forth saying that, you know, it's a Burris track, Burris track. Well, yeah, the regular races out there, you know, they do have a Burris tire rule. But the open class, you can run whatever you want. But even I've, I've followed a lot of the guys that run out there regularly and watch the results in the lineups. And most of the guys that were running fast out there were still staying on the Vegas. On the yet, well, I shouldn't say the yellow Vegas, because there's a lot of different ones, you know, a lot of different combinations in that. Absolutely. Now, I now not knowing fully the rules, um, obviously, are the rules intact that you have to run the tire you qualify on, or do they qualify yeah. there, or is it just strictly a pill draw? Um, typically, what we've done in the past is they've had two heat races and then a feature. And the Ohio Valley, that's how we run our series, which is you're going to run two heat races and then you're going to have your feature, which you're going to do your draw for the uh, for the first one, then the field's inverted, and then you're going to have your feature. Absolutely. Hey, for those of you just tuning in, we're talking to Scott Warning, who is the uh, Ohio assistant administrator for the Unlimited All-Stars, and he's giving us some uh, texts and tips. If you've got questions, there's a little chat button down on the lower uh, right-hand corner of the screen there. You can click on that, and if you have questions for Scott, um, please, now's the time to to uh, ask those. Uh, he's been kind enough to stay up late and answer any questions you might have, so pipe in on that if you've, if you've got a question for Scott, because I'm sure he can see it on there. And so, Scott, so are you saying then... Uh, I guess hypothetically, you run you run your two heat races because it's a pill draw for qualifying. You get to the feature. Is a set of tires going to make it through two heats in a feature, or are you going to have to bolt on fresh skins come uh, feature time? You know, being being you know being it being in the racing, it's I'd bring whatever you can afford to bring as far as that goes, because it's. Typically, like any other thing, once a set of tires goes through a heat cycle, they're going to drop off a little bit. And, I mean, it was it was the same way down at Dumplin' Valley down there. I mean, you know, once you get a heat cycle on, they typically drop off a little bit. But I I would definitely have more than – I'll have more than one set there. No question. It's just, just because – well, the biggest thing is, and, and probably every racer out there will test to it, you're going to take it, and I can't tell you exactly which way the track is going to go. You know, I can't tell you what the weather conditions are or anything else. But, you know, I would have them prepped and ready to go, you know, durometering it, you know, some hard, some soft as far as that goes. Right. But what the Ohio Valley is going to do, one of our, the quarter points race, we're going to have that in August. So the weather conditions will be very similar to what they are in September. Wow. Now, what about gear ratio? What do you what do you what are you running for a final there? Well, on the um, the four fifties, the on the four fifties, the last time those guys were out, you know, the guys that were running on those, they were they were running a gear ratio which was a it was like a fourteen sixty four. Now I can't say as, as far as, you know, that's the one that Westerfeld actually has the jack shaft kit in it. But, yeah, they were running a, a, a 14 driver on the clutch and a 64 on the axle. Now, we were on the smaller motor the last time we were out there, which was a 305. 
and we were actually on a, a 1564, a, I'm sorry, a 1568 is what we were actually running. The, um, we were on a, um, let me see, I wrote this down. Hang on just a second. Yeah, we were, we were on, on the smaller motor, we were on a 1568, which is equivalent on that to a 1464. And I believe the, uh, the 15 driver was a little bit better just because of the longer straightaways, because we were actually holding quite a bit of firing speed. And now, am I doing my math wrong? Do you, do you divide that into that 14? Is it 14 divided by or 14 times uh, the 64 to get your... No, it's it's just on the clutch driver. You're running a 14-tooth gear on your clutch and then a... Um, right. So as a final, what does that work out to be? Is that like an 8-9 to 1 or 9 to 1 or... I know there's a way to do that. I think I think it's 14 times 64... Which uh, let's see. Let me grab a chart here. I think that's eight. It says a eight nine six. It's, it's, no, it's a four. Well, it's like a four sixty is what it is. It's um. I'll tell you. Oh, hold on, let me get some notes out here. I mean, see, with with a lot of the guys that are running two cycles that are running those jack shifts, I'm probably not going to be a lot of help to them. But like a, a fourteen a fourteen sixty four is is going to be a five is going to be a four fifty seven gear it's called a four fifty seven gear ratio. Okay. Awesome. Well, we got about I got about I got about six minutes with you here, uh, Scott. So if if uh, any, uh, Tim Lawrence, thank you. He says divide. So I'm going to try that fourteen divided by sixty four. Yeah, but that's like point two one eight seven five. I must be doing something wrong. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at a gear ratio chart, and it comes out to a, a it comes out to a four fifty seven, a fourteen a fourteen sixty four ratio. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you, Josh Cully. Yeah, he got me right. I was I was going the wrong way. I was dividing the little number by the big number. Okay, so that gets everybody close. So uh, Scott Warning saying, guys, the Vegas are the hot ticket. Some Burris, but you don't. Obviously, the, the tires are open for the unlimited all stars. Uh, how many has the turnout been? Pretty good up there. Well, I've been I've been following them, and you know the the U our UAS. You know we're you know and and we're you know we're struggling a little bit like anybody else, but you know we're averaging say you know six to eight carts in there. But the open class. Out at Mount Orb, which is Route 68, I mean, they've been getting about, you know, eight opens on a regular basis. And a lot of those guys that run, they are guys that have ran in the UAS before and just, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, didn't run with them this year. But but they're, uh, they get a pretty good field of, of open carts out there. So even if somebody goes out there on a on a non UAS race to go out there and practice, they're going to be running with a, with some with a, a good group of cars, some fast cars that are very com, 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 that would be very competitive in the UAS. Right. Well, I got a question for you. Are you are you planning to come to the BK Seven? <laughs> Where's that at? Uh, it's in Oregon, actually. That's a, I know that's a long jaunt. Yeah. I was just kidding you, Scott. I wish we could get Bergfeld yeah, out here, but he hasn't been out here at all yet, so it'd be nice to get him out here. But What is the date on the BK7? It is January 31st. Oh, that's this month, right? Correct. Hey, I don't want to mean to interrupt you, but I got a question here. It's a pretty good one. Sean Carr uh, asked, what kind of stagger are you guys running? You know, out there... And that's a great one because the um, the front, I would say, you know, we're typically up around about you know two and a quarter in the front, somewhere around in there. But in the back, I would I would say you better be prepared for somewhat inch and inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, maybe in the back. Okay, you get that, Sean Carr, inch you know, and an eighth, inch and a quarter back there. That's a good good start. That. That's a good starting range to be in, and, and and again, you know, people have different setups because it's 
as, as far as that goes, because sometimes what we adjust on cross and front and rear stagger is all going to just depend upon, you know, the way the actual, what, what's going to happen in, in the actual track. 